27 April 2012, Abu Bakr Masjid, Jackson Head, New York, Bad Magri Bayan. Wanastaghfiruhu, wanastaghfiruhu, wa nu'minu bihi, wa natawakkalu alayhi, wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina, wa min sayyati a'malina, man yahdihi allahu falamudillala, wa man yudhilu falahadiyala, wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله I'm grateful to Allah that He has given me this opportunity of being with my Muslim brothers in New York Our Prophet Mashallah. Our Prophet has spoken about the virtues of such gatherings in many hadith. Sitting for Allah, discussing for Allah, the matters which pleases Allah. The way I began is the way the Prophet used to begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu, we praise him, Anastainuhu, we seek help from him, Anuminu bihi, we believe in him, Anatawakkalu alayhi, we put our trust in him. And Father Aid, this is the usual khutbah introduction our Prophet used to make. After that I recited a verse of the Quran. That is also a usual sunnah practice. I recited a very well known surah, verse of the Holy Quran. The simple translation is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking mankind, be afraid of the day, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ Allah, The day on which you will be brought back to Allah. You will be made to return to Allah. ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ Then every soul will be given back what it earned, مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Quran Sharif is a big one. On a Quran, my Quran, this is the last verse of the Holy Quran which was revealed. Very simple meaning. Be careful about the day on which you will be made to return to Allah. On that day, every person, male or female, will be given back the recompense for return. And they will not be wronged in any way. Om la yudham. প্রতিটি পুরুষ নারীকে বুঝিয়ে দেওয়া হবে কি সে অর্জন করেছিল হোয়াট ইট আর্ন হোয়াট আর দিজ আর্নিংস উই অল ভেরি ওয়েল নো দি আর্নিংস অফ দি ওয়ার্ল্ড ইউজুয়ালি পিপল ফ্রম বাংলাদেশ কাম টু ইউএসএ টু আর্ন বেটার এমুলিমেন্টস আর দি গোল্ড in Bangladesh also, everybody desires to have more commodities which usually bring happiness. They don't always bring happiness, gathering, amassing wealth and materials of the world. So, 
So you will know, we all know it very well. The worldly positions cannot be taken to the grave and cannot be presented before Allah on the day of resurrection. But taku yawman, be afraid of the day or be careful of the day. What is the day? The day is yawm al the day of resurrection. The whole West, in general, there are exceptions. <coughs> Don't believe in the life after death. Only a few months ago, the famous scientist Stephen Hawking of England spoke there is no life after death. He was criticized by his own companions. This is not Yuri area. Yuri area is mathematical physics, theoretical physics. Why do you comment about life after death? That's a fashion. And that has been the case with all prophets. They express their utter dissatisfaction at the utterance of Salih alayhi salam. They are dressed in, you are so dear to us in all matters. Now this message you speak about, we can't understand it. This belief has been expressed at all prophets. The Quran describes it again, describes it again and again. What is the purpose? The purpose is to make us believe. The Quran doesn't present big theories. Surah Yasin, all of you have it, many of you have it memorized. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the prophets in its different parts. In the very beginning there is a narration. Narrate to them the story of the township. When he sent there two, two means two messengers. They denied them. We strengthened them with the third one. The three went to the community and said, We have been sent to you. The people of the community said, You are just a mortal like us. You are just an ordinary man like us. The most merciful has not sent anything. In Antumilla Takribun, you only lie. So three accusations to the prophets. First one, you are just a mortal like us. The most merciful has not sent anything. You only tell lies. The most important thing is, what was the answer to this accusation? Paulu, Rabbuna Yalam, Inna Ilaikum Lamur Salam. Our Lord knows we have been sent by Him. That is the only reply. No theory, no verifying attempt, no excuse. Who knows? He knows we have been sent to you. Walu, Inna Tatayyar Nabikum. We consider you as one who brings evil omens. If you don't stop there, They were warned that they will be stoned to death. They replied, your utterings that we bring mishaps, we bring misdeeds, we are the roots of all evil omens, they are not right, they belong to you. This very simple approach of the prophets is one thing. That is the path of Imam. As the prophets spoke very simply, utterly soft manner, modest manners. This is the characteristic of every prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. The Qur'an is full of stories of the prophets. 
But those who don't believe, they take as as stories of the old people. Asatiru lawalina kata baha wa huwa tumla alayhi bukratan wa asila. Muhammad has written down the stories of the old people. These are recited every day again and again. Wa qala ladina kafaru in haza illa iftu niftarahu wa aanahu alayhi qawmun akharun. We will be astonished the way the Quran speaks about the accusations against the Prophet. Those who disbelieve say, in haza illa iftun, this utter lie, this Quran is utter lie. In haza illa iftun, iftarahu, he has fabricated it. Wa aanahu alayhi qawmun akharun. Others are helping him, helping him here. So these accusations against the Prophet, they are liars. Allah has not sent anything. They have fabricated. These are very common. Why does Quran narrate all these things? The Quran narrates this as a usual way of increasing faith. The narrations about the disbelievers, quoting their comments, is the path Quran takes to increase the faith of the believers. Is the mojas of the Quran. His full, whole Quran is filled up with it. Surah Qaf, Surah number 50. As you know, there are 114 surahs in the Holy Quran. It's Surah 50. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qaf, wal Quran il Majid, bal ajibu an jaahum mundirum minum faqal al kafiruna haza shayun ajib. They wonder that a simple man has been sent to them as a prophet. That was a common statement to the prophets of earlier days. Here is a comment aimed at our prophet himself. They wonder that a person like them, a mortal like them, has been sent to them to warn them. And they say it's a wonderful thing. Then their comment. Aiza mitna wa kunna turaba. What? When you are dead and you become dust. The language of the Quran is wonderful. I translate it exactly as it is. Aiza mitna. What? When we are dead. Wa kunna turaba. And we have become dust. Then the Quran is silent. What after that? Actually, within bracket you can put. You are saying we will be made alive again. We will be resurrected again. So that's in bracket. That is a distant return. That is a distant return is a phrase which means which will never happen. So the total meaning is what? You Muhammad you are saying will be raised from the grave. Never. It shall never happen. Look at the verse of the Quran. This is a verse of utter disbelief. But you recite it, you get ten virtues for every word, every alphabet. Subhanallah. Because it's a verse of the Quran. What is the reply of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Pada alimna matan kusul aldaminhum. I Allah very well know what the earth has decreased from them. What the earth has done about their body. Wahindana kitabun hafiz. Not only that I know, I have a book of records also. Very simple statement. So this method of the Quran, quoting the disbelievers. You can find throughout the whole Quran. <coughs> so my main point was, Allah. Be careful of the day, be afraid of the day. Why careful, why afraid? Because we have been given some responsibilities. If you don't carry them out, things will be different. If somebody says the mayor of the New York is coming, we'll take different state of condition. Things will be different because his position demands the treated carefully. This care, if Barack Obama goes to Bangladesh today, <laughs> Sheikh Hasina will be terribly disturbed. What shall I do? How to treat him? How to receive him? That is the upper circle. In the lower circle, if Sheikh Hasina comes to New York, everybody will give her due respect. Though she is a lady, she is number one person. Her position demands that she treated with care. If somebody shows carelessness, Everybody will say, you, you have no common sense. She is the Prime Minister of a country. She deserves to be treated in proper respect. So if you just put it up from Sheikh Hasina to Barack Obama, because Barack Obama, we cannot compare him with any other one. It's a very common claim of the Americans, the mightiest nation on earth. 
What is Velakamama? Was he not born in the mother's womb? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khalkam in Badi, Khalk in Fez of the Martin Salas. Creation within creation, three darknesses. Quran's reference in every case is to a final end and to the initial beginning. In Surah Yasin itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Awalam yaro insan anna khalaqna min nutfa. Does not man see that I created him from a drop? I have translated nutfa as a drop. Actually, a drop is far bigger. Embryologists say, at fertilization of the egg of the mother, the spermatozoan of the father, what is the dimension immediately after fertilization? The data is given in famous books. One book by Keith, Keith Moore of Toronto University. This book is taught in Bangladesh. The Developing Human. The dimension given is 0.1 millimeter. In America, they don't use metric system. So point one would be much less than one hundredth of an inch, or near about that. That is the notfa. In Surah Yasin, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Awalam yala insan manna khalak na min notfa." Does not man think? Does not man see that I created him from a notfa? So the translation usually is a drop. Actually, it's not a drop. It's a dot. Lesser than a dot. Even a ballpoint pen, the drop will be the, the small bit ink that puts in there, will be far bigger than 0.1 millimeter. So in Surah Yasin, the language is Minutfa. In Surah Alaq, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insan amin, alaq. Alaq means a clot of blood. So in the first surah revealed to our Prophet, Allah says, I created him from a clot of blood. Whereas in Surah Yasin he says, I created him from a dot or a drop. The whole story is put together in Surah Mu'minun. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ تِينَ I created man from the mixture of earth. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينَ Then I made him a dot in a protected container. The mother's womb is still to spoken like that. Summa khalakna nutfata alakatan. Then I made the dot into a drop, a clot of blood. Pakalakna la alakata mudgatan. Then I made this alaka into a mudga, a formed flesh. Pakalakna al mudgata izaman. I created a bony structure inside it. Fakasavna la uzama lahma. Then covered it with skin and flesh. Then I made him into another creation. The seven total stages of our creation. This is referred to by the Quran again and again. In another place, Allah's answer to the complaint of those who disbelieve is this. You disbelieve in that, that being who created you from a drop from the earth then from a drop of dot, then from a lot of blood, and created you as a perfect human being in the mother's womb. Our organs are all created in the mother's womb. <coughs> we come out in the world as perfect human beings. Summa sawa karajula. How can you disbelieve in him? That is the language of the Quran. Whole Quran is full of such statements. The whole Quran is an appeal to common sense. Don't you see what I have done for you? Don't you see my blessings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses them again and again. Sakhara lakum mafi samawati wa I put into subjugation for your service the whole world, everything inside this. Sakhara lakum shamsa wal kamara. He subjugated the sun and the moon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates again and again. He asked the Prophet, Kol. You proclaim. The usual meaning is say, but many authors translate it as proclaim. Pull. You proclaim before the whole world. Warn. Remind. Pull. Well, the Anshakum. He has created you. Vajala lakum sama. He has given you the power to hear. Vala dusara, the power to see. Vala fida, the hearts. Vala ma tashkurun. Little it is that you show gratitude. How important is our power of hearing? How important is our power of seeing? 
আল্লাহ তালা কোরআন মজিদে বারবার আল্লাহ নেহামতগুলোর কথা উল্লেখ করেছেন আপনি বলুন তিনি তোমাদের তৈরি করেছেন তোমাদের দিয়েছেন কান শোনার জন্য দিয়েছেন চোখ দেখার জন্য দিয়েছেন মন মন কি করে মানব জাতিকে বলো তোমার প্রতিপালকের অমুক অভিধান অকল্পনীভাবে ফুটায় বারবার বিভিন্ন আয়তে there are more than 6000 verses in the holy quran only a few hundred are related to our amal most of these verses are aimed at 
declaring the unity of Allah, His omnipotence, His being in no need of any help from whatsoever, no person, no, no, no being. And narrating before mankind the Nama, he says. In Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many such blessings. Wa ayatullahumul ardul maita. A sign for them is the dead art. Ahyainaha. I bring it to life. And bring out the corn from this. Tadajjuna aktani doshan mito pithili. Ami mutake shanjiti puri. Olmude tadaj khaddo the corns. Ami gojai. Wa ayatullahumul lai. Nasrakum in hunnaar. A sign for them is the night. Over the night, we have the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I take out the skin, the light, from it, it becomes all darkness. But they are more difficult to understand. At the end of Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses a ni'ama in such a manner, unbelievable. Awalam yarau, anna khalaqna lahum mimma amilat aydeena anu'ama. Do they not see? Awalam yarau. Do they not see means do they not think for a while? Anna khalaqna lahum mimma amilat aydeena. I have created for them upon which my hands walk. An allegorical translation would be with my power, special power, a very special creation. Anna this cattle, the cow particularly. The whole world eats milk. Where does the milk come from? Everybody knows it comes from the cow. Allah is discussing the cow in Surah Yasin, at the climax of Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin has been called the Kalb of Quran by our Prophet. Our Prophet has described Surah Yasin as heart of the Quran, Kalb of Quran. And Surah Yasin, final portion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussing the cow. Guru, Guru Ravachana question, why? Awalam yarao? Anna khalaqna lahum mimma amilat aydeena anu aman fahum laha malikun. They become owners of that. This is my cow. I have purchased it at such and such amount from the market. But Allah subhanahu wa says, وَزَلَّلْنَا هَا لَهُمْ They have been given a very mild nature by me. A cow, very big size, with pointed horns. He can do many damages. But you put seven, eight of them and put a child who beats them. The cow never turns back. Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَلَّلْنَا هَا لَهُمْ I have given this nature to this cow just for mankind. He is equipped with such a tool, such a weapon, which can, put, if it is put in the belly, it can tear it off any time. But it doesn't do it. وَذَلَّلْنَا هَا لَهُمْ I have made it, and I have given it this behavior for mankind. <laughs> so mankind, thank me. He says, "Vazalalna halam, ami uta kei apu akol ponyo namrata dizi. Atta dosta birat birat guru, ekta bhakta chile pita chhe pita chhe neja. Kichhu bolle na. Allah bolte chhe, tumi tu chinta karo na. Ore hi namro achoron keno hulo, ke ta ke dilay achoron. Ato chomot kar shing, guta dilay pita mudhe puri hoye jete pare." Take a mar dhol karo tumra, unu din pit pit phele takay na. Don't you look at that? Vazalal na halam, famin ha rakhu hum, famin ha akul nul pita tumra choro, or gushta tumra khao. Shara piti vite, shab che vishi, boro ne hamud dhutu. Ekta guru gushto, ba on ne na janwa le gushto, pakir gushto koran shi pil lakazi. Chicken. How do you eat it? Who has created this? Quran asks us to think. If you take a simile, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the cattle. وَذَلَّلْنَا هَلَهُمْ خَمِنْهَا رَكُوبُهُمْ خَمِنْهَا يَكُلُمْ وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِهُ وَمَشَارِبُ Many are the benefits they derive from it. Many are the drinks they make out of it. How many drinks are made out of the milk? Ice cream, lassi, dohi. Many are the benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in Surah Yasin. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِهُ وَمَشَارِبُ Then, أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ Will they not show gratitude? Tara ki shukur kur bina. So this shukur, this gratitude is what Allah wants. In tashkuru yaudahu lakum. If you show gratefulness, that pleases Allah. That is why the first teaching in the Quran is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. 
in Tashkuru, Yaradahu Lakum. If you show gratitude, that pleases Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, wants nothing but gratitude. If you bring it in a modern age, we are sitting in this room. At the time of our Prophet, we didn't know this blessing. We have the air filling the whole room. What about the pressure of the air? Scientists teach in physics, normal temperature and pressure. 14.7 pounds per inch square. What about this pressure? Doesn't this pressure remain the same in America, in Argentina, in Bangladesh? Couldn't it vary? Air is called a mixture, it's not a compound. Like sherbet, you put sugar in water. The components can easily vary, the percentage can vary. Air is called a mixture. Volumetrically, 100% volume of air, 78% is nitrogen gas, 21% is oxygen, 78 plus 91, 21, 99. Argon is 0.9%. 99.9, the remaining are other gas. So this knowledge of the atmosphere and the fact that it contains oxygen was discovered only 200 years ago by Krishna. People knew that oxygen is, the air is necessary for breathing. Now think about breathing. Do you breathe willfully or it is done automatically? Automatically. This taking the air inside, putting it up. Do we do it willingly or it is done automatically? automatically. Isn't it a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What goes in, air goes in. But what do the lungs do? The doctors say the lungs is full of alveolis, very tiny air bags. The air goes in, right lung, right lungs, left lungs, and then it branches out. One branch, two. Another two, another two, another two, twenty-six or twenty-seven branchings. In total, there are more than thirty-five million blood cells in every person's lungs. How many subhanallah do you see? The alveoli is the airbag, final point. At the final end, the alveoli is surrounded by blood capillaries. The oxygen from the bag goes into the blood. The walls are no barriers there. There is the wall of the capillary, there is the wall of the air bag. But the oxygen from the air penetrates the two walls, goes into the bloodstream. The carbon dioxide from the bloodstream comes out here. Shouldn't we say Alhamdulillah? <laughs> Hasn't science given us more details about the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is a verse in, this, in the Holy Quran. Of his samai risku kumamatuadum. In the sky lies your sustenance. And what we have been promised. Now, in the sky lies the risk. What is the meaning of risk? Any person at the time of our Prophet, if you would give it to him, in the sky lies the risk. What risk lies there? Well, we get the sun's shine, shining rays. We also get the heat. So, heat and light. The two we get from the sun. We breathe the air. <coughs> These are very well known facts. The water from, from rains come from the top. So four blessings. These were very well known to every individual. But now science says, how much percentage of carbon dioxide is there in the air? As I said, air volumetrically, 100% volume contains 78% nitrogen. 21% oxygen, 78 plus 21, 99. 0.9% argon, 99.9. The remaining 0.1% brings in all other gases. Percentage of carbon dioxide is quoted as usually 0.028%. What is the percentage of carbon dioxide? 0.028%. Very, very small. But now scientists say, Every food item in the whole world, every grain of wheat or every grain of rice contains carbon. The earth doesn't have carbon. Where does the carbon come from? They say every bit of carbon, organic carbon, comes from inorganic carbon, carbon dioxide in the <coughs> atmosphere. What is the percentage of carbon dioxide? 0.028. But if you consider the whole worldwide, 
This is data from American Encyclopedia of Science and Technology, not from any Molvi. Because if, if the Molvi say, we say you don't understand science. <laughs> but if you quote data from Science and Technology Encyclopedia, then things become different. They say the whole year from this 0 0.0 to 8 percentage of carbon, every food item, every leaf gets the carbon from the carbon dioxide. The process is very well known to science students. What is the process? There are many science students here. Photosynthesis. Bangla is a shallow strong station. Every leaf is a green item. It takes water from the ground to the tree. Sun rays come in. Carbon dioxide is there. What is the percentage? One zero to eight only. The two together, every leaf is a factory, subhanallah. This is a statement of science. Every leaf is a factory. The green color gives this chlorophyll and the sun's rays are converted into energy, food energy, chemical energy. You get the food, you get the energy. The energy in the sun is converted into organic energy. What is the total value? American Encyclopedia of Science and Technology gives the data. 10 to the power 11 tons of carbon. 10 to the power 11. 10 to the power 7 means 1 crore, 10 million. 10 to the power 8 means put another 100. 10 to the power 9 means put another 100. 10 to the power 11 means put another 100. So many millions and millions of tons of carbon is converted from inorganic carbon dioxide into carbon in the food item, glucose. Encyclopedia of Science and Technology declares this process is the most important process of living of life, animals and man and every bit of animal life. Isn't it a risk? Prophet Samai this Kukum has come into new light. That we get so great a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of carbon dioxide was not known before. Should not the verse of the repeated Afalaya Shkurun? <coughs> Will they not show gratitude? <coughs> the sun gives rays. At the time of our Prophet, people had no idea about the dimensions. <coughs> the telescope came in the 17th century by Galileo of Italy. After the telescope discovered the things change in different manner. Now scientists say the earth has a diameter of 8,000 8, miles only. No. For diameter, those who are not students of science, what is this diameter here? Moving in the mid path, about two and a half inches. So the earth's diameter is 8,000 miles. But the diameter of the sun is 8,65,000 miles. 8,65,000. 8,000 for the earth, 8,65,000 for the sun. The Quran says, Vajalna sirajam vahaja. We have given you a dazzling lamp. How important is this lamp for mankind? How much gratefulness do we show to sun? Shouldn't we say more Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. more Subhanallah? <coughs> so science is a new instrument to disclose how the nature works, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is getting greater and greater benefits. We talk about science and technology. The Quran has simple language. How do you go for science and technology? If I had not given you the ears to see, the eyes to, the ears to hear, the eyes to see, and the mind, heart to think, could you have science? No. 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 So the verse of the Quran is very simple. There is a famous verse in the same surah, Surah Mulk. Fajil basar, alladhi khalaka sabha samawat in tibaqa. He has created the seven skies and layers. Raise your gaze. Can you describe any inconsistency anywhere in his creation? Raise your gaze again. Look again. Look again. Look again. Karatain means repeatedly. Your gaze will return to you humiliated, insulted, and tired. How long can you look at the sky? That was the time of our Prophet. If you look at the sky, how long can you look at it? Now, 1400 years later, scientists claim they have made great discoveries. <laughs> Definitely they have great discoveries. For example, 
The sun's diameter has been put at 865,000 miles. How far is it? 930 Nine, uh, nine million. 93 million. How much time does the rays of the sun take to reach the earth? At the speed of light? Speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. How much time does it take to reach? They have estimated 8.5 8, 8. minutes. It takes 8.5 minutes for the rays of the sun to reach our earth. But the sun has been described as a star which gives its own light, own heat. The next star after the sun. Sun is the nearest star which puts its own light out because of scientist's fusion reaction. It takes eight and a half minutes. What about the star after the sun? They say the star after the sun is called Proxima Centauri. It is so far away, it takes four and a half light years. Even you travel at the speed of light, one lakh, one eighty-six thousand miles per second. What is the highest speed you drive cars in the highways of America? <laughs> well, let us say three hundred miles per hour. Even if you convert three hundred miles per hour to per minute, then to per second, this will be a small value. What is the speed of light? 186,000 miles, not per hour, per, per, second. Second. per second. Even at that speed, it will take four and a half hours to reach the nearest star. And then the scientists say, the same Mr. Stephen Hawking's book, Brief History of Time. It is his data, not from any more beside. His data. How many stars like the Sun and the Proxima Centauri are there in the family of stars in which we live? The family of stars in which we live, the galaxy, they say contains 100 billion stars, which means 10, 10 plus 3 zeros, so much crores. Dosh Hajar Kotita, 100 billion, 10 to the power 9, number of stars in the galaxy in which we live. His name is Milky Way. What about the Milky Way? How much time will take for one side from Milky Way to start from here, travel at the speed of light? It will take 100,000 years to reach the other side. Oh, wow. That from Stephen Hawking, brief history of time. The star family in which we live, the sun is only a small star. How many stars are there? They have approximate in estimation given in brief history of time by Stephen Hawking. The person who doesn't say, who doesn't believe in Akira and gives lecture, there is no life after death. He gives the data. We Muslims use the data to say Alhamdulillah more, to say Subhanallah more. They very well recognize the blessings of Allah. The Quran says, Yarifuna ni'matullahi summa yunkiruna. They very well recognize the blessings of Allah, but don't say Alhamdulillah. Don't say Subhanallah. They say, Rabbala ma khalakta haza batila. Every creation opens before Him. He has not been created in vain. Allah Everything has been created for a purpose. But after that, what is after that? A scientist in was lecturing in Bangladesh at IUT, Islamic University of Technology. He was talking on this verse. Very famous verse of Surah Al Imran. Inna fi khalqi samawati wa laudi waqtila fi layli wa nahari la ayati li ulil al baab. Certainly in the alteration of the day and the night, in the creation of the heavens and the sky, there are signs, S-I-G-N, sign, signs for the people of understanding. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ سَمَاءٍ They think deeply about the creation of the earth and the earth. And then they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلَىٰ So the famous physicist was giving a talk that Allah has not created anything in vain. So I said, why don't you proceed? What is after that? Rabbana ma khalakta haza batala. Every time he stopped at that point of the verse. So I submitted, why don't you go a little bit forward? He said, I have not studied any further. I said, the next word is subhanak. Say subhanallah. Rabbana ma khalakta haza batala. What does the Quran say after that? Subhanak. Fucking haza banar. Wallah, save us from the punishment of the fire. Wow. So study of the universe is very much there. 
But the concluding remarks are not there. The remarks are Subhan. Remarks are Alhamdulillah. These have been taught by our Prophet. So I was speaking about the universe, the basic ideas. Our Milky Way is one of many, many, many Milky Ways. How many Milky Ways, how many galaxies are there? We say our galaxy, the name is Milky Way, in which the sun is, the earth is, the solar system is. That contains 100 billion stars. The same book says, how many galaxies are there in the universe? He says, another 100 billion. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That is the usual saying of our Muslim. Subhanallah. His idea. What is after that? There are no more. <laughs> the details the scientists give is wonderful. They say there are galaxies as the eye sees. There are galaxies as far as 10 to the power 9 light years away. 100 crores, 1000 million. If you move at the speed of light, you will take 1,000 million light years to reach the furthest galaxy. Yeah. Over there, they are receding from our earth. Yeah. What after that? The science cannot tell us anything after that. They have given us the theory, theory of expanding universe. What lies after that? How long can you look at this telescope? The same old comment of the Quran, Farjil Basar. Summarjil Basar Akaratain. Yan Kalif Ilaikal Basar Khasian Bahuasi. Your gaze will return to you humiliated, insulted, and fatigued, tired. The same thing is happening for the scientists now. How long can you look at 10 to the power 9 at KSO? Either it's a radio telescope or it's an ordinary telescope. Your gaze is definitely going to get tired, humiliated, to get tired. So, first you will basar, haltaram in futur, summar you will basar akaratain, yan kali vilaikal basar, khasian. Your gaze, your sight will return to you humiliated, insulted, because you have not been able to find anything more. After 10,000 light years, what is there? They say it's the expanding universe. They can't say anything more. That is the stopping point of modern science. How much distance modern science has stored? 10,000 light years. Now look at the comment of the Quran. Yan kali al basaru khasiyan wahuasi. The same comment applies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed the basic materials for shokar. Science has given us new materials in every item. It is not necessary for the Quran to describe every item. There is a famous surah in the Quran, Surah Qiyama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts like this. La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyama. I swear by the day of resurrection. Wa la uqsimu bin nafsil labwama. I swear by the reproaching soul. The soul that rebukes himself. You are going to office, suddenly your wife says something, an altercation starts, you become hot in temper. You leave the house in a very angry manner. On the way as you are driving, you say in your mind, I have not behaved rightly. She was right. I have misbehaved with her. So you rebuke yourself. This is nafs al Allah says, I swear by the day of resurrection, I swear by the soul that rebukes himself. The third verse is important. Does man think that I will never recreate him? The subject is Qiyama. The fourth verse is very important. First he says, Does man think that I will never recreate him? Now comes the fourth verse. No, I am powerful enough not only to recreate you, but also to recreate perfectly your fingertips. The meaning of banan is very simple. You look at any dictionary of Arabic into English. Banan means fingertips. I crossed the immigration only yesterday. They put my four fingers. <laughs> and during the visa, I had to put my right uh, fingertip, also left fingertip, then four fingers. What is contained in the fingers? 1400 years ago, the Quran says, Bala, no, Padirina ala nusabiya banana. I will not recreate you only, but I will recreate your fingertips perfectly as they are today. Bala, Padirina ala nusabiya banana. So the knowledge about fingertips has disclosed another Pudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the most important thing, the person whose name our 
silent rakhen shaw Maulana Jamaluddin also mentioned his name Maulana Faikuddin also mentioned his name Maulana Afshaf Ali Thanvi a famous alim man of Allah from India he said the Quran is not a book of science the Quran is not a book of philosophy the Quran is not a book of history this is a spiritual hospital it cues the heart its purpose is not to discuss science Science has been left to mankind. He has, Allah has given us the ears, He has given us the eyes, He has given us the brain. You move in the earth. Paddara Fahada. He has destined a measure and has guided. The living items, man will discover himself. Inventions will come, innovations will come. That is not the subject matter of the Quran. We have discussed it only to be more grateful, only to say more Subhanallah, more Alhamdulillah. What is the Quran? He calls the Quran the spiritual hospital. It cures the soul, it cures the heart. The heart doesn't know who created him, who gave him this blessing. They search full of blessings, blessings all around. And there is a beautiful verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many blessings in Surah Ibrahim. Then says, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَعَلْتُمُ He has given you everything that you aspire for. This verse can be translated as, you wanted an you know, airplane, I have given you the airplane. We say, Please, everybody make yourself please. silent, please, don't disturb. May Allah forgive all of us. He has given you everything that you look after, that you look for, aspire after. Oh Allah, we need a plane. Allah has given you the plane. We will say, no, Americans discovered the plane. In 1903, Wright brothers first flew a plane in Kitty Hawk. Wasn't in America that the plane was first invented? Wright brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِي أَنْشَاكُمْ وَالْجَالَ لَكُمُ السَّمَا Without the ears, Allah absorbed, without the eyes, Allah fida, without the mind. Could the Wright brothers Invent plane? No. Therefore the claim of the Quran is whatever thing you get is his blessing. You claim your science, you claim your innovation, you claim your technology. Who gave the basic items? Who gave the property of such beautiful items? So the purpose of the Quran is to make mankind more grateful and to write him, guide him aright. Inna haza al-Qur'an yahdi lillati yaqwam This Qur'an guides to the most straight path and towards the truth. That is the purpose of the Qur'an. The purpose of the Qur'an is not to discover. It is not a book of discovery, it is not a book of science. It is a book that cures the heart of its diseases. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَا I bring down in the Qur'an items which is a shifa, healing. وَشِفَاءُ لِمَا فِي السُّدُورِ Healing for the heart, it cleanses the heart of the diseases. Diseases are unbelief. The Quran does, takes a course of very simple attitude. Look at the blessings all around you. I have given all these. And now you disbelieve. There is no Allah. There is no God. There is no Akhara. Surah Kiyama. Ayah sawal insana yutraka suda. Surah Kiyama, the same surah which discusses the fingertips, the finishing. Ayah Sabul Insana Yutraka Suda. Does man think that he will be let go just like that? Does man think that he will be let go just like that? Ayah Sabul Insana Yutraka Suda. Alam Yaku Nukfata Mimani Yumna. Was he not a drop ejected? Summa Tana Alakatan Fakala Kafasawa. Then I turned, turned him into a clot of blood. I made him a full creation item. Fasawa. I made him a perfect man in the mother's darkness, dark womb, and then brought him out. Alaysa dhalika bi qadirina ala al mauta. That being who created you in such a state is not he capable of bringing you to life again. That is the finishing of Surah Kiyama. This type of Surah and messages are in the whole Quran. So the beginning point which I decided. Fattaku yawman tu jawna fi Allah. The whole world is put of disbelief. We have discussed only one item, believing in Akhirah. Our faith is there, 
there is only a small temperature. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade or 232 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the room temperature now? 50, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. How hot is it? <coughs> bring it to 80, bring it to 90, bring it to 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature of fever, 104 degrees, 5 degrees. At what point does the water boil? Far above. <coughs> Our faith is of this order, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. For boiling to occur, we have to go far higher. Our Iman is also like that. To understand this, we have to compare our activities with the comp- activities of the Prophet's companions. That is why the Quran says, Look at their faith. Compare it. You will understand what is the difference in temperature. Temperature of faith. What is our temperature of faith? 51 degree, we make it little warm, 70 degree, 80 degree, 100 degree. But is that enough? No. We have to bring it double to that amount to bring to the boiling point of water. For our Iman to <coughs> serve us, to drive us to Amal, the most important item is that we have to return to Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us mention this again and again. Whenever something undesirable happens, the teaching of Islam is Say, Inna lillahi wa inna We belong to Him, to Him we return. Even the prayer for alighting on boarding items, a car, the prayer the Quran teaches, Subhanallazi sakhara lana hada. Glory be to that being who has subjugated this for us, the plane, the car, whatever vehicle we may be moving in. Glorified is Allah who has subjugated this for us. Subhanallazi sakhara lana hada. Wa ma kunna lahu We would not been able to do this but for him. Next. Wa inna ila rabbina Certainly to our Lord we'll return. We'll return. We'll return. Fattaku yawman turjawuna fiqhullah. Day of return. The day of return is everywhere. When he sleep he say, Allahumma bismika amuntu wahiya. Allah, in your name we die, and in your name we live. When you raise up in the morning, Alhamdulillah, Ladi Ahyana Badama Amatana. All praise belongs to Allah, who has made us alive after the night's nice death. Sleep is compared to a death, permanent death is death, and this death is sleep, only for the sleeping time. Wa ilayhi nushur, what is the meaning of wa ilayhi nushur? To whom is our return? To whom is our return? To whom is our return? Quran puts it again and again. We are forgetful of this. That is why Quran teaches it again and again. We are in America now, the most developed country in the world. Americans claim is the mightiest nation on earth. But what has happened to the mightiest presidents? What about the presidents before Barack Obama? Where are they now? How weak the presidents became at their old age? The Quran says, Allahu ladhi khalaqakum min zofim. Allah is that being who created you in utter, utter weakness. Khalaqakum min zofim. Summa jala min baad zofim quwatan. After your weakness, He gave you much strength. You become so powerful. I am the president of the mightiest nation on earth. Summa jala min baad quwatan. Zofam shayba. Then after your powerful state of life, I make you very old and very weak again. The Quran mentions in many different languages. The only lesson, you have to return to me. So be careful about what you earn. What are the earnings? The earnings are, as I have given models in my prophets. Every prophet was a model. The last of the models is Muhammad Rasulullah. That is why the Quran says, O in kuntum Allah, say, you declare, O my prophet, declare to the, declare to the whole world, how to make earnings for Akhara? In kuntum tuhibbun Allah. If you love Allah, Allah should be loved. Because His cares far more than the mothers. We love our mother. We can never talk about loving Allah. Who has given this affection in the mother's heart? Allah. Who has given the milk in the mother's breast? Allah. So He is far more worthy of being loved. That is why the language of the Quran. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah. If you love Allah, 
follow me. Allah puts this language in the mouth of the Holy Prophet. Well, you say like this, you declare to the whole world, in kuntum Allah, if you love Allah, fattabi'uni, follow me. You have Allah, you don't have to make any claim. If you follow the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you on his own. You get the love of his own, you get his, you become your beloved. What is the way? You behave as his beloved behaves, as his Habib behaves. His Habib, his beloved is Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa. <laughs> so every act that we do to follow the Prophet is an earning for Akira. A friend of mine used to show like this. This is a class. How did the Prophet used to drink water? Say Bismillah, Bismillah. number one. Drink with the right hand, number two. Drink in three sips, not just like that. Drink in three sips, Bismillah. Sip a little, bring out the glass. Sip a little, bring out the glass. In the last one you drink as much as you wish. I have taken the water to show you many of the blessings of Allah. So how many sunnah are there? Drink in a sitting position. Drink with the right hand. Say Bismillah. Drink in three sips. Now say Alhamdulillah. How many activities are there? Compared to this utterings of the arrogant disbeliever. Well, I have five fingers in this hand, I have five fingers in this hand. But does it matter if I drink with the left hand and all the water at the same gulp? Difference is, when you drink with the right hand, you have obeyed him. Because the Prophet Muhammad used to drink like that. Once you drink like the Prophet, the angels write down in an account of Akhara, Neki. The Ulama call it Neki, virtue. What is a virtue? That gentleman who called the Quran a spiritual hospital, he says the Ulama call virtue, Neki, Neki. You say, taka, taka. <laughs> well, I must say, neki, neki. Every act that you do following the sunnah of the Prophet would say neki in the account of it hereafter. The angels are writing neki, virtues, in our name because of our sitting here, because of our discussions. We have said our prayers, Maghrib, we have written nekis. We will say our Isha prayers, they will write neki. Every uttering, Subhanallah, is a neki. Every uttering, Alhamdulillah, is a virtue. Every uttering, Allahu Akbar. Our Prophet said, I have nothing more dearer to me than these four utterings. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. So many are the items to which you earn, earnings for Akhirah. But taqu yawman turjauna fi Allah. Be afraid of the day on which you will be taken to Allah. You will be made to return to Allah. Every soul will be given back what it earned. What are these earnings? Earnings are every activity that we do following the Prophet Muhammad Whether it is an uttering by the mouth, whether it is an activity by our fingers and legs and body, as in our Salat. In Salat we have all motions of the different parts. In simple zikr it is only an uttering. What do you say when you say tashahud? At-tahiyyatu lillah. What's the meaning? O oh Allah, all my holy utterings of the mouth, that is At-tahiyyat. That is the ibadah of the mouth. Next was Salawat, ibadah of the organs. Wat-tahiyyat, all other ibadah after that. We put it before Allah. At-tahiyyatu lillah, wa-salawat, wa-tahiyyat. They are the earnings. Earnings of the mouth, earnings of the body. Salah is the earning of the body. And that has been described by a Prophet as the most important earning. His saying is the same saying as it went before the Prophet. Musa came about 1500 years ago before our Prophet. Isa Jesus came 570 years ago. About 1000 years before Jesus came, Isa, Musa, Moses. The famous saying in the Quran in Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks Musa Establish prayer for my zikr. Salah. One thousand years, two thousand years before Musa came Abraham. 
He's famous saying, Rabbi Jalni Muqim as Salah. Ibrahim al Sakar. Oh Allah, make me one who establishes prayer. So Salah has been given to every Prophet in different forms. Final form is our form, what has been given to our Prophet Salah during the Miraj night. So the most important earning is the Salah. And our Prophet said, the first item on which man will be questioned on the day of the selection is Salah. Salah. <coughs> and you see now the whole world, as you said, four rakas, three rakas of prayer from Maghrib. I will say four rakas. Is there any country where Isha is said three rakas? No. 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 Is there any country when the first two rakas full of recitation allowed, second two silent? Is there any country where all four rakas contain recitation allowed? No. no. How Allah has preserved Islam? How Allah has preserved the Quran? His, his declaration, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. I have sent this remembrance. That means the Quran, the Islam, the Ahadith. Allah has taken the responsibility of preserving it. How they have been preserved for 1400 years? Isa a.s. came before our Prophet, just 570 years. After that, the religion became totally distorted. That is the claim of the Quran and our Muslims. But Muhammad Rasulullah said some departed from this world 1400 years ago. Has the religion been distorted? No. no. Major items have remained totally intact. The claim of Allah is true. It is upon us to follow them, to follow our Prophet ﷺ. So the aim of the gathering is to discuss the items of the Qur'an. The Qur'an itself declares, You remind. Reminding will certainly benefit the believers. That is the process through which Iman increases. And the Qur'an says again, Remind with the Qur'an. Just discuss simple verses of the Qur'an to the audience. That will benefit them. How will you benefit it? Our faith will increase. Our yaqeen will increase. The path of Iman, the path of Amal. The basic item is belief in Allah, belief in Akhara. That is why the Qur'an speaks very often. Belief in Allah, belief in Akhara. There are other items, but the most two are these two. All prophets have been sent for these two. There is only one Allah. We have to go before Him. And the earnings for that day are following His models. Now the model is Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah give us tawfiq to follow our Prophet in every sphere. May Allah make us successful. May Allah forget, forget, forgive our mistakes. Rabbana taqabbal minna. In the Kant of Samuel,